Rub up your engines! When you want to make sense of gas in the oil business, good luck, because it doesn't make any sense at all. It's insanity. The title of this is, Oil May Be About to Go Down on Higher Costs. You'd think if it costs more, the price would go up, but no, this whole thing has gone insane. And one of the reasons they gave is, look, costs related to moving oil around have soared. Well, generally, if the cost of moving stuff around costs more, then you pay more for it, right? And you would think, with all this crap going on in the Middle East, right, that there'd be even higher price of oil. Oh, we're not gonna supply and stuff. No. They're actually saying that's making the cost go down <laughs> because of shipping concerns. A lot of the oil stuff, it's very complex, intertwined, kind of like the Kraken. You know, it's got arms everywhere. We used to get a ton of oil from the Middle East. We don't do as much as we used to with them. We actually export a ton of oil now from the United States to Europe because of the Ukraine-Russian wars. You never know how these crazy conflicts affect things, but it's so intertwined, it's kind of insane, right? So with the Saudis and the Russians saying, we're going to cut what we're selling to people, right? It's backfired on them. The price is actually going down instead of going up. It's such a complex world. It makes your head spin. I mean, a lot of it goes against what is supposedly a capitalist economy in that if people buy more, the price is supposed to come down from the mass. But in the case of oil, people want a lot of oil, they're buying it, we'll just raise the price. It's an upside down world when it comes to the oil market. Don't ever try to make sense of it because it doesn't make any sense at all. Frozen Canuck says, I'm assuming he's a Canadian, I'm looking for a half ton truck. On the market for used truck, I don't care what brand. I'm a Dodge guy myself, never had problems with the trucks. I'm not a Chevy fan, I had nothing but problems. And I'll drive a Ford if the price is right. What do you think? All right, well, I can't believe that you've never had problems with Dodge trucks. So either you're driving really old ones when they made them better, or you don't put too many miles on them because they're very problematic, the Dodges, right? Now, you want a half ton truck. I'd say out of those, I go Ford. Get F-150 with a V8 engine. Or if you don't pull or tow or haul much, get it with a six-cylinder engine. But don't get the EcoBoost. Get the non-turbocharged six-cylinder engine. Don't get the turbocharged ones. They wear out too fast. You talk about those three, but you know what I'd do if I were you? I got a Toyota. Those things run forever. <laughs> Now, you might not want it to come with me. That's big enough. Get a Tundra. And again, don't get the V6 Tundra. Get the V8 Tundra. And you'll be happy if you can find a Tundra. Use Tundra. It all lasts all those by far. The Tundras last two to three to four times as much as Dodges, Chrysler's, and Ford's combined. Matty B says, I have warning lights and engine noise. Hey, I got a Mitsubishi. I was wondering if you can make a video, give some input. I have a hearing problem, but I think I can hear the timing belt making a noise. Sometimes the TCL light and then the engine light comes on. You may or may not have a bad hearing problem. As for the light, you get it scanned by a guy like me. There's thousands of possible codes. Then you can see what's going on. It might be something stupid like dirt on a sensor. It might be something more. As for the timing belt, if it has a timing belt, most cars these days have timing chains. And when they go, they rattle. You'll hear them rattle. Timing belts, they flap more. But any good mechanic can listen to it in two seconds. Take it to any good mechanic or make a video, put it on YouTube, give me the URL, and I'll listen to it. And I can tell you if it's a timing belt flopping around or a timing chain. And give me the year, make, model, and engine size so I can tell you exactly what you have. I have all the information for that, but I need the information to tell you what type of engine you have. Make a video of the noise, put it on YouTube. That's the only thing I watch. Don't send me a video that I got to download. I don't take virus stuff. I'm not, I never download stuff. I never download them. But I'll watch anything on YouTube because it's a completely safe platform. So anytime you got a problem, make a YouTube video, email me. The URL, I'll watch it. Well, you want to know what's wrong with my hometown Niagara Falls? Here it is. See that little tiny building there? I watched them build it when I go visit people in Niagara Falls. That's called the Welcome Center at Niagara Falls. It's right by the falls, right? So you got this goofy building with glass on it, right? And whoever goes to the Welcome Center, there's a bunch of horsemen over anyways, right? They spent $46 million on a stupid little building. That's when government money gets involved in stuff. They drag their feet. They've been working on this building for years. And it's not that big of a building either. But they've been working on it for years. Spending 46 million. Meanwhile, Niagara Falls is going down the toilet. Everyone's leaving. They got no tax base. You walk three quarters of a mile south of the falls where the tourism is. My wife and mother almost got mugged there. It's a very dangerous place to live now. <laughs> 
right? But they're blowing $46 million on a welcoming center, right? That's right next to the falls. You're right next to the falls. What are you going to do? You're going to go look at the falls. Are you going to go to a welcome center? No. You're going to walk around. You're going to go look at the falls. And to waste $46 million on that is total insanity. I'll give you a comparable thing that shows how insane it is. Niagara Falls is a tiny place. They kind of lie about how many people live there, but there's less than 50,000 people living there now, right? So this story. City of Houston spends $100 million more than it brings in to repair budget shortcomings. The city of Houston's three and a half million people, whatever it is, right? And they're whining about they spent $100 million more than they took in for their budget. That's three and a half million people. Niagara Falls blew 46 million bucks on this stupid building. This is why you can't have the government running things. They just waste money put it in the dumbest things on earth. Let's put a visitor center, you know, a few hundred yards from the falls. Everybody's going to the falls to look at it. They're going to this visitor center. That's Niagara Falls. That's New York State. That's anything that has to do with corrupt government. And it's taken them years to do it, and they're still not done building. They said they're going to open it soon, right? Tourist season's over. It's almost Thanksgiving. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, why don't you open it up when there's nobody there? That'd even make more sense. <laughs> well, it looks like the workers are being screwed over in the UAW. They have a tentative agreement with Ford now that they get 25% pay increase, but you don't understand it unless you look into the history. This is a 25% raise over the course of the contract, right? Now, they weren't getting raises in the past, so this 25% raise actually barely pays for inflation from the past, what they weren't being paid in the past, right? To now, they didn't get any cost of living increases, so they're going to get 25% over the years, right? In the future, they'll barely have caught up from the inflation in the past. Between now and the future, inflation's going to get a lot worse. Any idiot can see that, right? But they got a contract that says, here's what you're getting in the future. The future payments will more or less make up for the inflation in the past, but <laughs> that's in the future. <laughs> and in the future, you know inflation's going to be even higher, and they're not going to get their money. Meet up with inflation. Anybody can see that, you know? That's why they had to ask for more. What they're getting now is basically making up for the inflation of the past. But they're not getting the 25% pay rate now. That's over the course of years. And by then, you know inflation's going to be worse. So basically, the workers are getting screwed over. Who didn't expect this one? Well, here we go with stupid AI and self-driving robo-taxis. Guess what? Crews just shut down their driverless taxi service in Texas, in Houston, in Austin. Now, as usual, you get a bunch of horse manure from the companies themselves. They say, this decision isn't due to any sort of regular decision. The most important thing for us right now is to take steps to rebuild public trust. Part of this involves taking a hard look inwards and see how we do work at Cruise, even if it means doing things that are uncomfortable or difficult. Oh, I feel so sorry for these people at Cruise. Oh, you know, crocodile tears are coming down my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Problem is, they have spent billions on this AI self-driving crap, and they refuse to give up because then they've lost billions. So they'll continue to throw more money into the money pit. Here's some more of their crap. You want to laugh? I can't stop laughing. I quote, We have decided to proactively pause driverless operations, all of our fleets, while we take time to examine our processes, systems, and tools, and reflect on how we can better operate in a way that will earn the public trust. Trust. What a line of horse manure. I just can't believe the crap that comes out of these people's mouths, you know? Like I say, follow the money in this case. The AI self-driving people, they're following their money down into the money pit. <laughs> they won't admit they screwed up, so they'll continue throwing horse manure, but now that there's problems, they lay this touchy-feely stuff. We really care about you people out there. BS! They're trying to make money, right? And their little electric self-driving cars don't work that well. Self-driving, I told you years ago, I said to people, this stuff is future fantasy. Well, it looks like it's going to be even more in the future now. <laughs> they shut them down in Texas, too. They did the one in San Francisco, and now they shut them down in Texas. You think it's bad for the company Siemens that's losing money with offshore power windmill stuff, right? Guess what? General Electric is losing a billion dollars a year in this offshore wind stuff. One, it makes them look bad, but... 
They don't care because what they want, more government dole money. Well, we're losing money. If you want us to build these windmills, you're going to have to pay us an awful lot more money for them. You know the game they're playing, right? We have questions about near-term profitability. Governments now, if you want us to build these windmills, we don't know about this near-term profitability. So you got to give us billions to keep us going, right? Sounds like the biggest flim-flam in history. Well, these systems... They're not making us any money in the near term. And in the future, we're sure they will. You know, if you know anything about history, guess what? Tomorrow never comes. It's always today. It's never tomorrow. Tomorrow is always the next day. And if you're talking about the future, you can say anything because you don't live in the future. You live in the present. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.